Hi folks, thank you for checking out my video. Today I'm going to do a walkthrough on how to remove your old waste disposal and install a new one. We will be working on installing an insincorator. Uh, this one is an insincorator Evolution Select Plus. Let's take a look at some of the specs here. This is a quiet series. It runs on 3 4 horsepower, so it's very powerful. It has an advanced noise reduction. It is also a two-stage multi-grind technology. The good thing with this is that it does come with a power cord. The package comes with the upper flange here, but today we're not gonna use the upper flange because uh, the old existing sink already has one. We're just going to replace the bottom piece here. And it comes with an arm here and then with a clamp on there. Uh, a stopper here as well. I mentioned earlier it also comes with an electrical power cord. Let's take a look at what we have here. Beautiful color as you can see. Let's turn it around. Here you have the inlet for your dishwasher. If your kitchen has a dishwasher, the dishwasher pipe is connected to here. All the garbage, all the waste will come out through this drainage pipe here. So we're looking at the upper chamber of the disposal. You see this metal part here. So a lot of people think that a garbage disposal is like a blender. Somewhat, but it's, it's actually not. As you can see here, the blender would have the blade coming from the middle. But here, the blades are actually on the side of the grinding ring. When you switch the electricity on, at the bottom part is, a, uh, is an electric motor. It is an AC induction motor. And when you switch on the power, uh, the motor will uh, generate a torque or spin through the shaft. And then it is going to spin the plate here, right? The grinding plate here that is connected to the, the shaft of the motor. The spin will generate a centrifugal force. I hope I say that right. The force pushes everything that you put into the disposal outward. The waste will be then caught against the wall and the openings. When the foods become small enough, then they enter these small chambers here along the side. Again, the spinning combined with the action of uh, this impeller here will cut the food throughout the wall until they become small enough to fit into this hole here. This one has a multi-grind or dual stage, two stage grind technology. So the, the first grinding happens here. And then as the food enters these chambers here, another grinding takes place underneath. That's why it's a dual grinding technology. Pretty impressive. This is also a quiet series. As you can see, this thing is humongous. It's bigger than your normal smaller disposal. And that is because in this particular area here where all the grinding is happening, Underneath here, underneath this plastic body here, it's sound insulated. So when the grinding happens here, most of the sounds are kept within. The other piece that's making the sound quiet is this here. Normally, this is a hard piece. It's The pipe is connected to there. But here you have this tube here is pretty flexible. So when you connect the arm to it, like so, and then you attach the clamp onto it. When it vibrates, it doesn't transfer all the noise. So this is part of that quiet technology. Let's take a look at the bottom. Here is you have the a reset button here. So when your disposal is not working, when you turn on the switch, it might be it was stripped. So uh, you just have to reset by pushing this button here. Uh, the other piece too here is this middle part. Sometimes you have big particles in the disposal and the motor gets stuck. So you just need to plug this in there. This is called the, uh, I don't know, jam buster or something like that. You can use this to manually move the motor whenever the disposal gets stuck to make it work again. So if these two combination doesn't work, then you need to either fix it or get somebody to fix it. One factor that kept people from installing the disposal themselves is the wiring of the disposal. It's actually very simple. For the disposal, the wires are kept underneath here. You need to remove this panel to have access to the wiring of the electric motor. And here you have two wires coming out. The white one is always a neutral wire. And then you have a black and yellow wire, and this is a hot wire. You connect it to the, the hot wire of the, the wall. In the middle here, you see a little green screw here. That is for ground. You always need to connect the ground. 
just in case there's a short electricity then will go through the ground. So this is a power cord that came along with the package and you will notice that there's a green wire. So that green wire should be attached to the ground. And then you have two black wires, right? And so this is where the confusion is. Okay, which, which one do I wire, right? Which one do I make the connection with? With this particular one, this is a non-polarized terminal because these two terminals are the same. The other ones, polarized terminals one, you have one that is kind of a, a little bit bigger, larger than the other one. But it is sort of polarized because of the ground terminals here. And because when you connect it to the receptor, there's only one way that you can connect it to the receptor because of the ground. In this application, because this is an induction AC motor, either way your wire should work. It's just the electric motor inside the disposal will move one direction if you connect it one way. It will reverse if you connect it another way. So it should work. Uh, there's not a lot of complicated circuitry here. But if you really want to get technical about it, you want to connect the live wire to the live wire of the power cord. I'm going to uh, show you how to do that. So here is an electrical outlet. So how do you figure out which one is a live wire and which one is a return wire since they're both black? As I mentioned earlier, this terminal here has the ground terminal here. So there's only one way you can plug it in there because of the ground wire. You'll notice that the outlet has two openings here. One is longer and wider and one is shorter. The shorter one is always the, um, it's the live wire, okay? The shorter one is the live wire. The longer one here is the return wire, which is the white wire. So what you do is you don't plug it in, but just remember that this side, because this terminal is going to go into the, the smaller opening here, will be uh, the live wire. You kind of make note of it. So you make note of it, you can mark it or something like that. So you make note that this one here, this particular one here, is the live wire. You, you can mark it, I don't have anything to mark, but I can remember it. Once you figure out that this is the, the live wire, you connect it to the live wire of the disposal, right? Because the live wire is always connected to the switch, right? The electricity will come through here and then it'll return. So you want the switch to be on the live wire. So now you know which wire is connected to the black wire and which is return wire. Let's make the connection. This is a, a little short here and I want to make sure that uh, they really connect. So I'm going to strip off the insulator a little bit more for both. Pull it out of the way. As you can see now it's a little bit longer. And I'm going to do the same thing with the new power cord. First you want to plug in the wires, like so, into this flange, right? And you want to insert the power cord into the slot there, like so. And kind of screw it in there, screw it in. Tighten this part later on. You can put this in but I'm not going to because it's already locked. I think it's secure enough. You're going to use the pigtail here to connect the two wires. Connect the return. All right, here you go. Okay, don't forget to connect the ground and then screw in the ground tightly right here. Shove everything in there, like so. Put the cover back on. Cool. And once you do that, you tighten in this here. So you want to pull it out so you can see this insulator here. Now it's tight and secure. I would install this part now. So this way, I don't need to deal with it when I'm under the sink because you have very little space under the sink to work with. So I'm gonna put this in there first. Jab it all the way in there like so, as you can see. I'm going to put this clip here, sew it in there like so. Locks it in. So this is the drainage part. The top part here is for the, the dishwasher. So currently this is sealed right now. You can't see it. Right, it's sealed inside, 
just in case you don't have a dishwasher you don't need to open this but since we have a dishwasher you have to break the seal loose i'm going to just use this to break it loose and once you break it loose the parts will come off and you just have to carefully collect all of them here you go here's the seal that came from here and you want to make sure you collect all the smaller pieces out from here all right this is done so here's the old disposal it is currently not working and plug the power cord for safety reason as you can see here too these prongs here are the same once you disconnect the power cord and screw the dishwasher valve pipe here like so just using a flat screwdriver and also unscrew the drainage part take it off the hardest part about this is there's not a lot of space in here to work with so you have to figure out how to get yourself in there okay so now the screw is out remove it so at this stage i'm going to put on a glove here so leave it on first don't take this out yet because you want to remove the bottom part first right you just have to like wiggle it so that it'll come off you pull out the tube here then you have a little bucket just in case there's water as you can see here there's still water in there so this part here is already disconnected so here's the tool that comes with it like an allen wrench so you just plug it in like so and then do a counterclockwise twist there there you go see how it's moving and it's coming off here this is in the way a little bit here okay let's see if i can push this out of the way there we go it's nasty Okay, now it's coming off the railing. Okay. So yeah, you want to make sure you have some cloth here. Just in case you have liquid coming out like this one here. Pretty easy. So that's the old part there. It's pretty nasty. Good with changing it. It's 20 years old. So we'll see. So here's that original flange there. We're not going to remove that. I'm going to remove this arm here out of the way the original arm there we go before we make the connection i just wanted to show you what's going on here with the mounting mechanism what you see here is the bottom mounting mechanism here and then you have the top mounting piece this piece here is connected to the sink what i'm really doing when i'm mounting this together is connect uh, the bottom piece here to the upper piece the upper piece here you see this railing right this railing here gradually goes up and it has a little bit of a groove here the bottom piece here if you can see there's a little hook it's kind of like that and it's going to grab on to to the railing here when i make the connection this piece here is basically a vehicle for you to use the jam buster or this allen wrench here to rotate or or tighten the mounting together like so when i'm installing the disposal what i'm doing is i'm aligning the hook here to the bottom of the railing when i'm ready to tighten it up i use the jam buster to rotate it in a clockwise position as you can see here now this thing is uh, engaged and really hooked up to the top part as i move this clockwise position it will continue to go up and then it will kind of uh, tighten up the whole system together so now it's locked it's latched on and and locked together so you can move it up and down like that it looks complicated but it's actually not when you when you're really doing this with that let's get this thing installed all right folks this thing is really heavy and we have quite a distance from here to up there so what i'm doing here as you can see i'm using i'm using a jack because the room here is so small i don't have enough leverage to really pick this up without breaking my back and so i'm going to use this as my friend to help put it right there i'm going to position it 
underneath. Slowly bring it up, like so. Hopefully, uh, the jack is tall enough to reach the top part. Just have to reposition it. Yeah, it looks like it's gonna be tall enough to help me out here. So, you see the little hook there? This right hook right there is going to latch on to the top piece, the top railing. So I'm trying to position, yeah, uh, and I notice this arm here is way back there, so I'm going to reposition this. Like so, here we go. Yeah, so, so this way when I uh, turn this clockwise, this will fit in there. That is what I'm hoping for. And the jack really help. As you can see here, I don't have to use my muscle. Screw it in and plug it in like so. So that's a little trick I'm using right now. Yeah, I think that will do. Hopefully this will do. Uh, put this in there like that and twist it up. And as you can see here, it fits perfectly. And now I'm going to remove the jack, right? Because now it's holding onto it. This, uh, the railing is uh, off the flange here. It's grabbing onto each other and I'm going to slowly remove the jack. And it should hold it in place. Cool. All right, jack's coming off. So I might have to readjust this a little bit. I'm pulling the jack off, guys. This is a really good idea. The top part, go up there. The top part here fits perfectly. Screw this in. Here we go. That's pretty tight. Yeah, so this part here is you gotta shove it in there like that. The new disposal is wider, so it's pushing this out a little bit here, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna have to cut out this pipe, as you can see here, so that it'll fit. Let's see, move it. So folks, I cut a little bit off here, so that this way, this will fit, let me see. Yeah, it's fit perfectly here. So now, the issue here is, it's not tall enough, right? So what I'm going to do, is I'm gonna take this off, cut it off a little bit here, so that it'll come up. So you just have to kind of work with it. It's not a perfect match, so you have to just tinker and take off whatever parts you need. So I'm gonna cut this off a little bit here. Take this part off here, it comes off like that. And then remove it. Just take a little bit off from here. So this way, you can screw this in like so. Like so. All right, folks, so I trim off the edges here so that it's shorter for this piece here. Put this piece on like so. And there's a clamp there. There you go. Plug it in there, as you can see. And then kind of do that. Put the clamp on. I'm gonna use this thing here to squeeze the clamps. So once the clamp is on, tighten it up. Tighten the bottom piece here. Tighten with your hands. So everything is screwed on nicely. Let me tighten the piece up a little bit. All right. Okay, the last part here is to insert the piece here on top. There we go, perfectly. Plug the switch on. Boom. Turn the switch on. Oh, look at that. It's beautiful. Don't go away. It's really quiet. 
with that, the project is done. I'm really happy about the installation. As you can see, you can definitely do this yourself. Save some money. Use that money to buy a powerful yet quiet disposal. I hope you found the video helpful. And if you did, please share the video. Again, thank you for taking the time and I hope to see you again soon.